Hi, it's Kernetex here with a series of videos about installing Beyond Linux from Scratch 11.0. Um, it's been a while since I last did a series of videos for Beyond Linux from Scratch. Um, I think the last version I did was 9.1. Um, there's kind of maybe a couple of reasons why uh, the last time I did Beyond Linux from Scratch, uh, I built nearly all the packages within the manual and it uh, got to me a little bit, I'd had enough of it by the end of it, so uh, having a rest from it was quite good. Another reason for not doing uh, any Beyond Linux and Scratch videos uh, since then is because I've been trying to think of um, other projects that I could uh, create videos for um, that utilise Beyond Linux and Scratch but not doing just a generic, another generic desktop build. Um, and I have been working on something else but it's not finished yet and in the meantime I have had a few requests on my channel for another Beyond Linux from Scratch video, uh, series of videos so that's what this is about. This is going to be another series of videos for building Beyond Linux from Scratch um, on the desktop but in particular I'm doing it on the Mac so recently I've just done the Linux from Scratch 11.0 on the iMac um, and I kind of left that dangling there. It was my intention to do a Beyond Linux from scratch on it, but I intended doing it a little bit later on in the year. Um, but now I've brought that forward because, as I say, there was some demand. So although I've mentioned an iMac, the installation of Beyond Linux from scratch is kind of generic. It won't really matter what hardware you're on, whether you're on a PC or a Mac. Um, the only details that might matter is when we come to do the X windows, you've obviously got to select the correct graphics um, drivers in the kernel um, and to compile the correct graphics drivers and so on. And there might be other minor changes like USB um, changes, depending on what type of mouse or keyboard and so on, like just minor things, but they're not things I'd be concentrating on particularly because obviously the number of different uh, types of hardware for mouse, keyboard, video and so on um, is vast. Well, actually video is generally in two or three camps, so um, I can kind of mention things there, although I will be um, just using the built-in Intel video, which is what the this particular Apple has got. Um, some of the Apples, I know I've got NVIDIA cards as well, um, but I won't be covering that. I will just cover the Intel graphics because it's fairly um, what's the word it's it's you know more or less everywhere apart from obviously if you've got an AMD that'd be slightly different but I think the um, BLFS book highlights those differences anyway so we'll be going through that um, so yeah it's although it's on an iMac as I say even if you're on a PC of any type the installation will be 99.9% .9 the same it will just be those little driver parts. Um, even the wireless part, you know, there's countless wireless adapters. Um, I do I do intend to show the wireless getting um, up and running. Um, I hope it does work on the Apple um, because I have had a couple of people request about getting um, a demonstration for the wireless working. Although I think one was asking me to show it actually as part of LFS which I may well do because I understand some people may not have the ability or it might be might be difficult to um, get a wired interface for Linux from scratch um, despite the f fact that um, wireless has got so many problems. Um, another thing I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to make the assumption that um, going to be getting rid of the Mac system which is still on there so the first thing I'm going to be doing is to reboot back into the Endeavor OS which is the host system that I used in the Linux from scratch on the iMac videos uh, getting rid of the Apple partition so that we can get all of the space on the disk um, for Linux from scratch and beyond Linux from scratch although we don't need that much space um, and so the idea was ultimately to replace the Apple uh, Mac OS 
because it's well certainly for this age of this Apple it's not being supported anymore it's currently on the last version that's going to be released um, I think there's only going to be a few security updates for the next year or so as far as I can ascertain so it will be effectively made obsolete uh, just for the fact that there's no more software being released updated software being released from Apple so as I say the, this was the idea of the videos ultimately was to show how you can repurpose your Mac as a Linux machine and continue using it because although this Mac's um, I think it was 2014 so it's seven years old um, it's got a Haswell processor in it albeit it's a mobile version it's not the most powerful it's still quite a useful machine, a, a usable machine. Um, I've, I think I mentioned in my LFS video, it's got, or it came with a one terabyte rotating disk, and that really did slow the machine down. So I've, I've actually replaced the disk with an SSD, and that's made quite a lot of difference. It's brought the machine back to life. Um, if you've had a, ever had to, or if you've ever replaced a spinning disk in a laptop or even a desktop with an SSD you'll know you'll know the difference it can make it's um, uh, although SSDs are expensive still they are coming down in price it's um, in my opinion money well spent to uh, to improve the life of a, a machine and, and the responsiveness and so on so yeah once we get rid of the partition um, what we'll then be doing is well as I've got here I've booted into Linux from scratch um, I'll be making a couple of changes. One thing I will be doing straight away is to increase the size of the font. It's quite small, although it's legible to me. Um, I have had a couple of comments on my channel about the size of the fonts. Um, so I I'd, I'd try to make them um, as big as I reasonably can. It's also easier to read anyway when you're working at the terminal. If you've staring at a screen for several hours and the fonts are too small you can tend to get eye strain a lot sooner so it'll be a good thing for for me to um, look at a screen with bigger fonts um, once those tweaks and things are done then the next thing I'll be doing is to try to build up um, a system which is more and more usable so at the moment we've just got a, a Linux from scratch system if I actually log in um, if I show you the for example the uh, password file which shows all the users on the system you can see it's just a basic system there's root bin a daemon user message bus user UUID and nobody so basically there's one actual user which is obviously the super user and the rest are all system accounts then not user accounts or anything um, also you can see the fact there is only about five accounts for the system normally in a system with um, more software on it there will be other accounts um, available to run servers and so on uh, offer some sort of security for example if you're running an rsync daemon uh, I'm pretty sure you, uh, the security for that involves creating a sp specific rsync user to run the rsync daemon in um, so yeah it's a very basic system there's no mouse so if I wiggle the mouse I have to be aware of this mouse it's a bit of a funny old thing I've plugged in there I hope it will work um, but yeah if I wiggle it there's nothing working there at all at the moment because there's no mouse driver so that'll be one thing I'll be installing um, there's also no way of downloading things apart from very primitive way using FTP which I can run you can see there's a prompt there and you can connect to websites and everything with that one thing there's a problem with that is that FTP is insecure so it's a um, unencrypted connection so another thing we'll be doing is getting a program installed which will be wget to enable us to download from HTTP or HTTPS connections um, you can use curl to do the same thing but I believe I think I'm right in saying off the top of my head that curl uses or, or requires more dependencies so wget is a lot easier to get up and running once I've got wget going then I'll be um, installing uh, well a mouse driver next 
and also a text-based browser and we'll be using that initially to get the X windows up and running so it's, although it's a browser and it's a text-based one it's still quite awkward to use because you've got to be careful when you're copying and pasting commands that you're actually not missing any commands and so on it's not as nice to read um, as a graphical browser but it's usable um, and essential at this point uh, as I say, I'm just assuming that the Mac is the only machine that you've got you do not have any other machine to uh, SSH into from that remote machine to, into this machine having said that um, there's a chance you might need to look at the web page so maybe if you've got a mobile phone or something to look at the LFS website I'm not sure um, if it's absolutely necessary off the top of the head I will be showing that on the screen sometimes um, as appropriate but I won't actually be using it to copy and paste commands because that will be on the local machine and it's not connected into the Apple Mac at the moment it will just purely be on the capture screen just to just so that we can see it and I can talk about what what is on the book it's just be a bit easier to see things um, but having said that also if you have got a mobile phone um, and you want to install via SSH uh, it might still be a bit of a pain doing it on a mobile phone but it, it could be possible there are apps for connecting via SSH to um, a remote machine but of course we've still got the problem on the Mac that there's no SSH server um, so again in time that will be another thing that we'll be showing how to install um, to gain remote access but I won't be doing it as a means to an end to show you the installation of BLFS on, on the Mac because as I say my idea is that you may have this Mac um, that you just want to repurpose you may not I'm just assuming you haven't got any other machines to SSH into it. It's like the worst case scenario, if you like. Um, but just, just to show how it is possible to build up the screen at uh, the BLFS from uh, a basic LFS system into BLFS. Um, it may well be the last time I show this because it is quite strained. Um, I'm assuming that most people have probably got access to another computer where they can use it to. SSH into a remote machine whether it be a Mac, Windows or a Linux uh, based machine so um, yeah I, like I say probably the last time I'll show this because it is quite difficult it's almost uh, punishing to do it really um, but it is possible so I guess it's a, a way of showing that nothing's impossible with Linux um, so yeah once the text browser has been installed uh, we can start building up the system so I'll be looking to build up the um, X windows next and then once we're into X windows things get a lot easier because we then can use the copy and paste in the graphical environment which is a little bit nicer uh, so then I'll be looking to install a browser which will make things even easier to copy and paste and then once that's been installed um, we can copy and paste to and from the from the browser to a terminal. Then it's relatively plain sailing from there because you just got to decide what software you want to install for your desktop. And I, I intend I do intend to go through um, all of the. Um, I'll show you all of the. Um, oh, I've got it loaded here. Uh, read online. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do intend to go through all of the different desktops and windowing managers and so on. Um, so what have they got in here at the moment? So KDE, obviously, GNOME, and then some of the smaller ones like XFCE and LXDE I'll be showing. I'll be installing them. Looks like they don't have any of the tiny little ones anymore. Um, I used to do yes. The display managers is the bit you log into, and then window managers are just like basic um, interfaces. Um, yeah, I'll probably install these again because some people do use them still. Uh, you might want to install them on a an older machine that's got fewer resources, and these are ideal for that. 
if you want to have a basic GUI, um, but uh, to run other applications, um, it does mean that you can use an older machine uh, and have a GUI. Um, but certainly the Mac, as I say, this 2014 Haswell-based machine is quite capable, or should be quite capable, I haven't tested it yet, of running no more KDE. Um, I don't think they'll be particularly slow. Uh, and then I'll be showing some of the larger apps, such as LibreOffice and so on. Um, I'll be installing Firefox, Thunderbird, uh, basic sort of desktop utilities. I might install one or two of these other programs, for example, GIMP. Um, it's quite useful if, if complex um, raster-based graphical uh, editor, if you like, image editor. Um, maybe one or two of these other ones. Um, let's have a look through here. Yeah, things like Audacious, Lame. Well, Lame, Lame probably part of another installation. M Player for playing videos. Um, VLC, likewise. Um, yeah, CDR utilities. I mean, I could install. There's Brazera, I think, for, is part of the KDE, and I can't remember the GNOME based one now. Um, for burning discs, although obviously the Mac, well, this Mac hasn't got a CD writer in it. Um, I'm not sure if the desktops do come with them or not. I don't know much about Mac, but I'm, I'm, I guess the laptops would do the, is it the Airbooks, I think they're called. Um, yeah, so I'll just be showing some of the um, applications that would be usable inside a graphical environment. So it's going to take a while. Um, the thing with BLFS, the same as LFS, don't rush anything, take your time, um, read the pages. I, I do it myself, you want to get things done and you just sort of skim, skim over the page and you might miss one critical command that affects either that package or other packages down the line. Um, even when you're copying and pasting, just check that you are copying and pasting the whole command. You're not missing a letter off the end of a um, a path that you're copying, for example, which would mean that things could possibly get installed into the wrong place because the name has changed because there's a letter missing off the end of the path. Um, so I've got to try and bear that in mind because you do get to a point where I think, oh, I want to get on with this, and you just start rushing through quickly. But um, especially when I'm demonstrating this on the video I, it, I do have to try and pace myself to ensure that I'm not making mistakes and that um, it's I'm, I'm explaining it as well as I can um, but so yes like I say it does does pay to just take your time um, also found if I've been sat at the terminal doing a lot tiredness creeps in and that and again you can make mistakes then and you tend to rush more because you want to get some more done before you finish. You know you should be finishing and so on. So um, that's probably my biggest bit of advice: just to take your time and, and read the read the book carefully.